This video is a collaboration with a live overflow. I'm going to build a simple Arduino powered electronic combination lock and try to explain some of the electronics behind it. And in his video, it will show how it could be attacked. To start off, we're going to need a way to enter a combination. I could use a matrix style keypad, but for the purpose of simplicity, I'm going to use four buttons. One side of the button is connected to the Arduino, and the other side is connected to positive 5 volts. When the button is pressed, the gap will be bridged, and the pin of the Arduino will rise to 5 volts. When the button is released, the voltage on the pin will stay at 5 volts, because the charge has nowhere to go. To solve this problem, we can connect resistors between the Arduino pins and ground. This lets the charge slowly drain away when the button is released. The layout of the button makes it extremely easy to add the resistor. I'll use a red LED to show when an incorrect pin is entered, and a green LED that will light when successfully unlocked. To indicate when the system is ready for a pin to be entered, I'll use a blue LED. If I connected these LEDs directly to the Arduino, a large amount of current will flow, which will likely damage the Arduino and LED. To prevent this, we need a current limiting resistor in series with the LED. A resistor will limit the flow of current to a safe level for the Arduino and LED. To calculate the value of this resistor, we need to know the voltage drop across the LED, which can be found by measuring it with a multimeter. Once we know the voltage drop, we can calculate the value of the resistor using Ohm's law. The maximum current for an LED like this is around 20 milliamps, so I'll use that in the calculation. 160 ohms is not a value I have, so I'll use 200 ohms instead. I'm going to use a motor to indicate unlocking, but the Arduino can't supply enough current to drive it directly, so I'll use a transistor, which is like an electronic switch. When the transistor receives a small current from the Arduino, it lets a much larger current flow to drive the motor. Like the LED, we need a current limiting resistor to avoid damaging the transistor or Arduino. To determine the value of this resistor, we need to know the current draw of the motor, which can be found by using a multimeter in series with the motor. Now we can find the value of the resistor, with some help from the transistor data sheet. The motor will draw more current when it starts, so I'm going to halve this value and use the closest resistor I have which is 2.2 kilo ohms. The motor can create negative voltage spikes that can damage the Arduino. To prevent these, I'm putting a diode between the motor terminals. A diode only lets current flow in a single direction, so any spike should flow directly through the diode. Buttons aren't perfect, and the contacts inside will bounce slightly, and as the Arduino runs very fast, it may think the button has been pressed multiple times. To fix this, we need to slow the Arduino down, so any bouncing will have settled by the time the button is checked. Other than this, the code is very simple. On each button press, we check if it matches the current digit of the pin. If the button doesn't match, we set a variable to false. When the last digit is checked, we unlock the door and show the green LED if the variable is true, or show the red LED if it's false. On an incorrect combination, we also increase a timer to prevent someone brute forcing all possible combinations. Thanks for watching. Check out Live Overflow's video showing how a lock like this can be attacked. And if you're new here, please subscribe. It would help me out a lot.